When you're so much better than the competition, you have to find little ways to motivate yourself. So when Larry Bird was having his best season ever, he just got kind of bored one night and he took an uneventful regular season road game and turned it into one of the most iconic games in NBA history. Larry was uh, well known for predicting what he was going to do on the road trips. They asked Larry, well, so Larry, you come to the end of the road trip. Well, what do you got in store? You've uh, achieved all your milestones. He said, I'm going to play this game left-handed. And they said, yeah, right. So no, I'm going to play left-handed. And if the game's in doubt in the fourth quarter, I'll switch back to right hand. But he played the entire game left-handed. And he had a triple-double. <laughs> Harris Cooper close for Kersey, two points for Bird. That was a great shot. I mean, made it look easy. He shot that with the left hand, <laughs> floated right. underhander, and made it look simple. <laughs> now that's the one. Larry Bird with that left hand again, and that's what makes him so tough. The fact that he has the ability to use both hands in close to the basket, something all young basketball players strive to do, perfect both hands in close. On Valentine's Day in 1986, without his second best player, Kevin McHale, Larry Bird disrespected an entire team by playing the game left-handed. And at the end of three quarters, Larry Bird had 27 points, nearly all of them left-handed. He was literally toying with the entire league. I had a good left hand around the basket, and they always, if you, if you watch, uh, if I remember the game correctly, they were forcing me left to help. And they wouldn't get in there quick enough, so I, could, I had shots around five, six foot with my left hand. I felt more comfortable with my left hand there than I did with my right. Then once I got started making a few, I just kept going. Larry Bird from Johnson. Excellent pass and another two points with the left hand to Larry Bird if you're counting. He's got 31. Still 4-10 remaining here in the third quarter. But here's how this legendary game was even more impressive than the legend itself. Because in the fourth quarter, it was a very close game. And over the span of five possessions, Bird made three consecutive insane left-handed shots. Most NBA players would never even dream of trying a left-handed floater in transition. But Bird casually faked one defender, avoided another, and lobbed a shot off the glass to put the Celtics up by six. Larry Bird in the left hand again. 35 for Larry. And he has a triple-double. He's got 11 rebounds and 10 assists. And after a Blazers 3 cut the lead in half, Larry was still using his left hand and buried a hook shot that no other player has ever mastered other than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he did it left-handed. For Bird. Another left-hander by Larry Bird. Larry's mixture of skill, creativity, and flat-out arrogance to pull off a sweeping left-handed hook shot during a close game in the fourth quarter has to be top five most savage moments of Larry Bird's career. But what was crazy was fourth quarter close game, and all of a sudden he breaks out the most insanely batshit nuts left-handed shots in the world. <laughs> Throwing left-handed floaters off the glass in transition from like 12 feet. And then the very next play just throws in a sweeping lefty hook from like 10 feet. And then two possessions later has a sweeping lefty and one hook. And it's like, okay, like you never see any offhand shots like that. And he did three in a row while they're holding off a charge. So Larry was a cold, cold, cold blooded man. And you didn't need me to tell you that. And with under a minute to go, the game was tied up. And Larry Bird decided that he should go back to his right hand and put the Portland Trail Blazers out of their misery. But as Larry went for the kill, a bizarre no call puts the Celtics in deep trouble. Bird in a great move. No foul, no goaltending. Three on two for Portland. Drexler, Vandaway. Timeout, Boston. They can't believe it. Going over to the official saying he hung on the rim and he's right. It should have been goaltending, Bill. Let's now, take a look at again. it. Let's see if Bird gets hit. There's the hanging on the rim on the shot by Bowie. That was goaltending with the ball up there. Portland now with a two-point lead in 41 seconds. And down by two, Larry Bird puts the team on his back. Drexler. Percy had it, but Bird comes down with the big rebound. Larry Bird. We're tied with six seconds left. Timeout. Portland. Bird with 43 points. This game-tying shot sent the game into overtime. And in overtime, with the Celtics down by one with 17 seconds on the clock, 
and Larry Bird's historical performance on the line. Larry Bird does exactly what he's been known to do over and over and over again in the clutch. Gene Clark, top of your screen. Larry Bird with three seconds left, timeout for Portland. 47 points for Larry Bird. The Boston Celtics, as they usually do, have prevailed here in overtime from Portland. Our player of the game, our light beer and Turner Broadcasting most valuable player, is Larry Bird with 47 points on 62% shooting, 14 rebounds, 11 assists. He had one steal and one block. Another triple-double for Larry Bird, his second consecutive one. Some night it goes in, some night it don't. That, that night it happened to, happened to work out. But if I remember correctly, we won that game in overtime by like one point. So, you know... I probably shot shot with my right hand whole game. <laughs> After that game, a reporter named Dan Shaughnessy wrote an article in the Boston Globe titled Just Call Him Lefty Bird, where Larry Bird said, I'm saving my right hand for the Lakers. But why was Larry Bird so dead set on embarrassing the rest of the league and proving that he was way better than everyone else? Because one year earlier, the Celtics were set to repeat as NBA champions, but Larry Bird made one disastrous mistake that ended up costing the Celtics a championship. Because that year, a Celtics-Lakers rematch in the NBA Finals seemed inevitable. Last year they had a down year, and we had an up year, and we're playing great, and they're playing great. So I look for us to be uh, in the Finals to see who plays uh, the LA Lakers. The, the way it's going right now, you're going to be MVP twice in a row, maybe the world champions twice in a row. Larry Bird, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greats of all time. Well, no question. You know, we were the favorites, and we made our way. They won the East, we won the West. So it's like uh, everybody just get ready, sit back, and uh, let's enjoy it. You know, this is it. First week of June. And it always happens to be the Boston Celtics and L.A. Laker time. However, as the Celtics celebrated a victory in the Eastern Conference Finals at a local bar in Boston, Larry Bird got into an argument with the bouncer. This argument escalated into a shouting match that spilled out into the streets and caused Larry Bird to punch the bouncer in the face. An eyewitness said, I don't know what happened inside. But there was a noise and a scuffle as they came across the street. Then Larry Bird went boom, a nice sweep over the top with his right hand to the left side of his face. This altercation ended in a lawsuit and Larry Bird agreed to a settlement. And unfortunately for the Boston faithful, Larry Bird broke his shooting hand during this incident and it was noticeably swollen for the rest of the playoffs. Bird made a great play. He knew he was going to get clobbered. He's got a swollen finger that he got. Look at that index finger on his right hand. You wouldn't believe a guy with a finger like that can shoot that well from the outside. He can hardly bend it. And when the Celtics team doctor examined him, the doctor said, Larry Bird had been in some kind of altercation. I examined Larry's hand, and it was swollen to double the size of his regular hand. And the condition of Larry's finger is such that he cannot make a fist on his own. And when Larry Bird came out the next day for practice with his hand heavily taped, that same reporter, Dan Shaughnessy, doubtfully asked if Larry Bird would be able to shoot with his hand wrapped like that. Bird told that reporter that he could tape up his entire shooting hand and still outshoot the reporter with his left hand. So Larry Bird had the trainer tape his entire right hand into a fist and challenge the reporter to a shooting competition, 100 free throws at $5 per shot and Bird could only use his left hand. The reporter made 54 out of 100 shots, but Larry Bird, with his shooting hand taped into a fist, made 86 out of 100 shots left-handed. The reporter owed Larry 160 bucks that he paid in cash the next day before the Sixers game. And like a cruel older brother, Larry took the money and played the entire game with those eight $20 bills stashed in his sock. Savage. Larry Bird was literally in a class of his own when it came to shooting the basketball because he was the first player in NBA history to average 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, and 90% from the free throw line, becoming the very first member of the 50-40-90 club. In fact, until Kevin Durant did it in 2023, Larry Bird for 35 years was the only player ever to have multiple 50-40-90 seasons while averaging at least 20 points per game. Larry Bird was truly ahead of his time and in a class all by himself. Larry Bird winning the long distance shootout for the third year in a row. Unfortunately, after that bar fight, 
Larry was forced to play the rest of those 1985 playoffs with a broken shooting hand. Only he knows the effect of his injured elbow and finger and ankle and what have you. He never uses it as an excuse, but so far he has not shot well from the field and has not been a factor. I think Dr. J may be playing him, uh, forcing him to go to his right hand a little bit more than Larry was in the prior games. He's playing on his hand and jabs at it and he wanted a foul. He didn't get it, Larry Bird. Too bad. And when asked about it, Larry said, it hurts, but I can't use it as an excuse. It's just another thing you have to accept. In fact, Larry tried to downplay his injuries so much that the story of the bar fight that broke his shooting hand didn't even come out until the following season. And when the story broke, Larry Bird was not happy about it at all. Um, and, you know, Larry, when I wrote about Larry's barroom fight at Chelsea's, which was hurt mm -hmm. the 85 playoff push, you know, Larry didn't talk to me for four or five months after that. I knew that was going to happen. I understood that, but it was too bad, you know, and I mean, he eventually, I think, got over it. He knew, he knew he made a mistake there. We all make mistakes. It's okay. But there was no way you could cover it up or pretend it didn't happen because it affected the fans. It affected how he shot possibly and whether they won the championship or not in 85. So that was a story, but, you know, if a guy's just having a thousand beers or something, it's not affecting his play. You don't need to write that or, or get into his business. When it gets into the fans business, then, then we do. Although the Celtics took care of business and beat the 76ers in five games, Larry Bird struggled immensely shooting the ball those last two games. Bird, top of the key. Bird is three for 11. This is his worst shooting game of the series. Because he went from averaging 28.7 points per game to 15.5 points per game, and from 52% shooting from the field to 30% shooting from the field. So was this a coincidence? I think not. Because in the finals versus the Lakers, Larry continued to struggle. Larry Bird with his first shot. Bird came back. He's been hampered by a variety of injuries. Bird with a runner. 10 to two run right now for LA. And Larry Bird misses. Stop. Pulls up against Ainge. And it's now 12 to 2. Casey Jones is going to call a 20-second timeout. The crowd is indeed out of the ball game at this point. While Larry might not use it as an excuse, I will. His shooting numbers were down significantly, which is the only reason that the Lakers won the 1985 title in six games, preventing the Celtics from going back to back. Bird. 70 to 53, Bird. Missing. They're all trying for three point shots. Bird. Misses. That's got to be the ultimate thrill for the Lakers. Kareem hits again with a sky hook. The Lakers are less than a minute away. Unusual sight. Celtics losing a championship at home. Never happened before. Larry Bird's gone out of the ball game. Only he knows how much he's been hurt and how it's affected him. And you know the first thing will be out of his mouth in the locker room to the press? I played terrible. No alibi. Never use the injuries as an excuse. The Lakers are winning it. Three in six years. L.A. comes to Boston and wins the world title. You know, I was the only guy that wrote about Larry getting into that barroom fight in the 85 finals when you guys lost. And I, I really felt that that was newsworthy because he didn't shoot well after that. And, and the Celtics mm. didn't win the playoffs that year. And they had a really good team. As you know, the team was stacked. Coach, how, how badly injured is Larry Bird? Is there an excuse there? Oh, there's no excuse, no. If he's out there in uniform and he's playing, then, uh, uh, then that's, 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 that comes with the territory. I guess Larry should have shot the ball with his left hand like he did against that reporter. Which brings me to that very next season, because if you actually believe that the Lakers would have still won the title in 1985 if Larry Bird were healthy, then look no further than 1986, when the Celtics brought back the exact same starting five. Because after Larry's hand was healed, he and the Boston Celtics wanted their revenge and dedicated the entire season to dethroning the Lakers. And that year, the 1986 Celtics steamrolled the entire league 
and finished with a regular season home record of 40 and 1, which still stands as the greatest regular season home record of all time. And including the playoffs, Larry Bird led that Boston Celtics team to a home record of 50 and 1, dethroning the Lakers as NBA champions, just like Larry Bird envisioned. The way it's going right now, you're going to be MVP twice in a row, maybe the world champions twice in a row. Larry Bird, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greats of all time.